Peace be with you. Friends, what a joy to welcome you to our online worship today. If you'd like to join us in person for worship on Sunday mornings, we celebrate the Holy Eucharist at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. with Bible study in the parish hall at 9.30 a.m. We also gather for worship on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss any of our content. And if these videos are a blessing to you, please make a donation to support our mission at the link in the video description below. And we do thank you for your generosity. Our reading from Holy Scripture for today is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter four, verses four to nine. Let's hear these holy words together. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I was brought up, like many of you, I'm sure, to believe in the value of gratitude. My parents taught me that there was no worse sin in life than being ungrateful. I can remember as a very small boy sitting down at the dining room table and painstakingly spelling out, thank you, Nana, for the gifts my grandmother, who lived far away, would send for Christmas and birthdays. To this day, if my mother hears that somebody has done something nice for me, she'll say, oh, isn't that nice? Make sure you write them a note. There's immense value in gratitude. Almost nothing else can make a person feel as good as a simple and sincere word of thanks, and 
I'm afraid nothing can form grudges quicker than neglecting to thank somebody when they've done you a good turn. Of course, this weekend our country celebrates Thanksgiving, and St. John's and many other parishes throughout the country put out lovely decorations that speak to the beauty and the bounty of God's goodness and God's good creation. Thanksgiving is not an explicitly Christian holiday per se, that is, one need not be a Christian to be thankful for the good things in one's life. But Thanksgiving, giving thanks, that is, and the value of gratitude are all very much part of a Christian life. In fact, giving thanks in many ways is what makes us Christians. Like the little boy painstakingly writing a note at the dining room table while his mother looks on, we gather week by week and day by day in the presence of God at every time of year to collectively give thanks and praise to him. We express our gratitude in prayer and song and we share together in the bread of Christ's body and the wine of Christ's blood. We share our thanksgiving meal, if you will, in the Holy Eucharist. The word Eucharist itself, which we take from the Greek of the early church, translates as thanksgiving. And so, on this day of thanksgiving, we hear St. Paul's exhortation to the church in Philippi to rejoice in the Lord always and to give thanks. This is one of those passages of scripture so chock full of meaning that any one word could be the subject of a much longer sermon than the one I intend to preach today. It is indeed one of those passages of scripture with which Anglican Christians are most intimately familiar, whether they know it or not, because it provides the basis for the blessing we most often hear at the end of the Eucharistic liturgy. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Now, who says Anglicans can't quote scripture? It's one of my favorite passages in the Bible and one I turn to often in anxious times in the world and in my own life. This is one of the parts of the Bible that I will turn to almost by muscle memory, reminding myself of the holy hope to which I am called. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Friends, here the apostle reminds us of that most essential Christian hope, that the Lord is near. Not just in the sense that he will come again, though certainly that, but also that Jesus is as close as can be to each human heart that will receive him so near as to live within them. The Lord is near. Christians have this hope not only for a future yet to be seen, but we can feel in the strength of that hope that all is well in the present. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What St. Paul says here resonates so deeply because it is so relatable. A regular pattern, a habit of prayer, continual prayer, and spiritual communion with God is the safeguard against being overwhelmed by the anxieties of life, and we will all have our anxieties. And what's necessary for such prayer? Well, Paul says three things. First, an openness to asking God for what we need. Second, a belief that when we ask for what we need, God will indeed give it. And third, undergirding and overarching both of these is the spirit of thanksgiving. We can't ask God for new mercies unless we are mindful of those he has bestowed already. As one commentator on this passage puts it, the unthankful person cannot pray, for they have no real sense of the goodness of God. Friends, this is the value of gratitude for Christian people. Gratitude gives us a sense of where God is already at work and in our lives. 
Thanking God for the mercies, the blessings, the gifts we have received assures us of God's presence, God's goodness, and God's desire to continually give us good things. Christians should not be people who take anything for granted. Instead, we should be the kind of people who can trace all of the good things in life back to their source. The God who is goodness itself, mercy itself, blessing itself. I'm sure we were all brought up with that well-worn admonition to count our blessings. Part of what this passage tells us is that counting our blessings and giving thanks to God is not kid stuff. It's an indispensable part of Christian life, always. Now, some will accuse me of wearing rose-colored glasses, that my little sermon here (laughs) amounts to nothing more than always look on the bright side, folks. Count your blessings. Well, though I am perhaps a congenital optimist, if you think I'm playing Pollyanna here, well, think again. There is a kind of outlook that some folks have that refuses to face the darkness of this world. And that outlook can take some very fortunate people quite far in life. But it's quickly dashed the moment they are confronted with any kind of real suffering. And we will, all of us, face real suffering at some point. Friends, the Christian doesn't just accentuate the positive and eliminate the, le- the negative. No, the Christian lives with eyes wide open to both light and darkness, and gives thanks at all times, in all circumstances. This is not possible with simple optimism. It is possible only when we have understood that the goodness of God laid bare in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus transcends all that can cause us distress. It is possible only when we recognize that all our suffering, all our pain, all our fear and anxiety, even death itself, will never have the final say. That in Jesus, all of these have been absorbed into the life of God. And in Jesus' dying and rising again, have been defeated forever. And that, friends, is why ultimately The Apostle speaks of the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That is where our gratitude in the life of prayer will lead us. It is not a passing happiness, a transitory glee that the Christian seeks after. It is the peace that comes only from the knowledge and love of God, which transcends all in our lives, all in the world, and gives us the spirit of rejoicing. How wonderful to be reminded as we celebrate the blessings of the harvest that we can reap the benefits of gratitude. From greatest to least, we have so much to be grateful for in our lives. We serve a good and loving God who knows how to give good things to his children. We serve Jesus who laid down his life for us. Practicing gratitude to God becomes a powerful way for us to live. Our hearts become glad when we are grateful to God. We affirm the good in our lives and recognize that the source of this goodness is the Lord God. Thanksgiving has the ability to change the direction of our lives, to fill us with joy and the peace which passes understanding. And so, let us pray in thanksgiving. Pray with me now. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, Hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in our baptism, you adopted us for your own. Quicken, we pray, your spirit with us that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, friends, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.